Okay, now I'm going to go over to step two. Hopefully, this one is enjoyable as the previous step. Okay, now I have the test bench up and ready to go. I took off the old motherboard that I had installed on it. I left off these four pins so that I could get the ITX motherboard on it. The one that was in there before, the one from the salvage, was a full ATX, so it used all nine of them. So I take this motherboard and make sure it can fit in here and make sure all of the holes line up. I'm not putting the IO shield for purposes of just testing it on the test bench. Even though I have a slot there that would handle it. And it looks like the pin, the holes all line up. So let me just get a couple of these on. I don't need to do them all. So let me get these on so it's nice and secure. Let me connect the connectors. I'm not going to connect all of these wires. I do want to do some of the header pin stuff. So according to this, the power LED is those two on the right. And these two together are the power LEDs. Let me see what they look like in terms of, there's a negative on that one and a positive on that one. And according to this book, the positive goes that way. The negative goes this way. So the power LED positive is this one here. The power LED negative is this one here. And then the hard drive. Looks like it has a plus and a minus there as well. Let me make sure I get that right. Yep, the red is the plus. Makes sense. According to this, the plus is in the same place, same orientation, so it goes that way. Hopefully these things work here with this motherboard. I had some issues with my salvaged one then i want the reset switch power switch okay with that now i want to do the power this one's using the full thing get get these two arrows together when you see this on a power supply connector where it has an arrow you have to have them pointing to each other and it should pretty much lock in place see the little notches there so this should go in together like this again we got to get it to the side that's going to latch so it's actually reversed at this point not a lot of slack so i'm going to pull this out of here and go the other way two arrows together can't really get it in there wrong it really won't fit the fan and the pump fan and here's the 12 volts for the bike processor it's eight pin let me get that out of there so i'm going to need both of those same thing the latches on that side so we got to put them in together this way a stubborn out of the case you can imagine how tough it is when it's in the case and you gotta squeeze in there and try to get that up inside so this thing will split out the two as this single connector requires so let me get this in here and let me get the monitor I have the monitor sitting right there in the front and I'll put a monitor in here and I might as well go ahead and put a case fan on and stick that down in there like so Hopefully this fan works on this motherboard. And now let me get the uh, water cooler. I'm going to install the water cooler temporarily here. I'm going to take it off before I put it back in the case. All sorts of wires here. Protective plastic coating here. Got to make sure we take that off before we actually use it. Like the fan connector here and an RGB connector right here. I'm going to have it blow through from this side for now, so let me temporarily mount this in place. Don't have to be permanent here, I just want to make sure that it works and that I'm not overloading the processor as I do it, in terms of heat that is. Let me just tape it for now, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Just want to make sure it's working. I can check this out at the same time outside the case. Make sure that it's not something that's going to be dead to start with when I get it in there. So that should be able to blow right through there. So now I should be able to uh, hook this stuff up. The pump has the two wires on it too. One for RGB and one for pump. Well, I'll do it after I get this installed. Let me get this installed on here first. The motherboard. Well, before I do that, i got to put the bracket on. Let me get this all out, and I should be able to then tip this up and be able to easily access the bottom like that. Okay, 
These are the standoffs I gotta put in. These things here, they have to go into these slots here. They sort of lock in place like that. So this is gonna be on the bottom going up. So let me get all four of these in here. So you gotta put these on here to lock these screws in place. Like that. Like that. Good insulation too, I guess. So I'll put that back into the motherboard for now. It's time to connect it. I'll go ahead and connect the cooler at this point. Put the pump on top. Now how that's going to be oriented, I haven't decided yet. It all depends how it works when it's in the case. This is one of those things I'll be playing with. So let me save this little plastic piece here. I'm gonna take this off, but I'm not gonna get rid of it because I'd like to put it back on potentially. Get this radiator on after I put a little dab of, dab of gel on here. On top there, now if I fill it in the threads, get this one started. Let me go ahead and tighten these while I'm here. I will eventually do the, uh, the full water coolers in a build. Maybe my super server. I haven't decided that yet. I was thinking maybe I would put two water coolers all in ones. A couple of 240s or maybe one 240 and one 360. But maybe that's a good time to, uh, to try it the other way with the tubing and the fluid pumps and the water and the risk of getting water all over my part with being an old computer technician. <laughs> You don't look forward to something like that. I can tell you that right now. Just getting it tight while I can here. And there. We are done with that. Same thing. Make sure I'm pushed up from the bottom here. So it's being stubborn here. Here we go. Now it says the middle hole has to be done. So as I screw these down, I'll have to make sure the middle hole, I'll loosely put them all in for now. So I don't have to hold the bottom anymore. Probably should have did this before putting the memory in, but it's not that bad. It's not as bad as the other tight quarters I had a few minutes ago. <laughs> and it tells you to Screw this down in a cross pattern. I'm just finger tightening it for now. This is probably the best way to do it anyway because I feel it better. I can feel it bottoming out better. CPU power back on again. Pump goes to the left. And it's only a three wire. Okay. And then the fan. So I'll just position that over here. Put this over the top of the miscellaneous stuff that's in there. It's a dongle. Those are these types of cable spoolers that generally call it a dongle. Monitor back. Let me get the monitor up here. Get my keyboard and mouse. Plug these guys into the dongle. Matching colors. Get a power cable. See what it looks like. Plug the power cable in the back here. It's off camera, sorry about that. Plug it into my little desk outlet here. See what we got. Whoa, that's a good sign. It says reboot or select. You see that on the screen? I got this here. It's up. Let me do a reset and hit the delete key to see if I can go into the BIOS. So I'm gonna hit the reset button over here. I'm going to hit the delete key and see if this works. Hitting the delete key many AS rock. That's good. There we go. We're in the BIOS. I feel the pump. It is pumping. The fan on the all in one cooler is turning. I put the mic down to it and maybe you can hear it here. Take this off the thing so you can't, can't interfere with it. 
feels the pump pumping. It sees all the memory. It sees my Corsair two eight gigabit sticks. Total memory is 16. So the time is off. That's okay. It does see my M2. It says my M2 CT 500 P1 SSD8. Kind of hard to see, but I just wanted to show you that it is up. Let me see, what is the BIOS? CPU fan, I guess that's chassis fan one is the pump. That's what that one is. They're all turning. Version H370. Let me go online here and see if there's a newer one than that. Let's go to the AS Rock. I come in here and go www.asrock.com. Support. Let me type in uh, H370 Pro M ITX slash AC. Let me see what I got for that. Downloads. I'll go to that. Go to downloads. What have I got here? That looks like my motherboard. Let me go down and see um, BIOS. And right now I have version 3.00. Looks like they give you both a flash version and a Windows version of their BIOS. So 3.00 is quite old. It was released uh, 2018, July 25th. So the newer one is, that's Instant Flash, is 4.10. Update, install, microcode, and ME. This was released June 11th. My little eight gigabyte memory stick should be fine. So let me run formatter. This one here, J, that's the eight, eight gigabyte one. I'm going to format that. It's giving me a warning. I don't want to put a label. FAT32. I'm going to do a start. Okay, it's giving me a double warning. I see it accessing the uh, USB, so I know I'm forwarding the right thing. And it's all done. So if I look at it now, there's nothing on it, which is what I want. So it's in drive J. Let me download this latest version from the global area. Users will not be a flash once upgrade. Okay, I'm not going to be able to back up on that one. Save file. I'm going to save it to my scratch. Right click on it. I'm going to say extract all. It's going to create, I guess right here, the subdirectory. That's this one. Extract. I created a subdirectory on there. Right. And it did right here, it created this subdirectory and it put the ROM file there. So let me open up my drive J again and I'm going to copy that file to drive J. It's accessing it. It's good. So I can close down my scratch. I can close down this drive. What I'll do is I'll eject. I'll come in here and safely remove, eject the disk. It says it's safe to remove. Good. Take it out. Now let me go ahead and update this BIOS. I'll put it into one of the USB ports. It lights up. So we want to go into tools. Instant flash. It found something called 410 H370410. So it found it. So let me go ahead and say update. I tabbed over to that. Do you want to update you? Yes. After pressing enter, the system will automatically reboot. Please wait a few seconds and then the BIOS update will continue. So it's got to reboot first. It's rebooting it. AS Rock. Do not turn it off. It is doing the instant flash. Almost there. Rebooting now. Make sure it comes up clean. Make sure the BIOS version is updated when we're there. I'll hit the delete key. We're back in. Okay. So what BIOS do I have? Got the right one right there. 4.10 now. BIOS is updated. Computer is working. Let me uh, take it off of the bench, test bench that is, and get it ready to start putting it into the case. Temperature of the CPU is still good, 32.5. So we know that the uh, all-in-one cooler is working. The motherboard temperature is 37. Where it's picking that temperature off is usually near 
where the fan connector is. So right down probably underneath this part right here where the fan connector is. That's usually where they put the actual temperature sensors. So like this zone, feel it, work, feel it running. So we're doing good. <laughs> Okay, I realized I forgot something. I forgot to put my heat sink on my M2 drive right here. So I'm gonna pull the M2 drive back out and put a heat sink on it. Let me first remove it. Gotta be careful with this little screw here. Screw here right at the end. And we'll take that out. I have to grab it as I pull it out. This screwdriver unfortunately is not magnetic. Make sure I don't lose that little screw. Now I can take this guy out. Very gently wiggle it until it's out. And there we go. And I got this thing that I ordered. Comes with a little screwdriver of its own and a bunch of little screws. Inside this envelope is the actual heat sink. Two layers, one that goes in the bottom and one that goes in the top. And they have to match up with the place for the screw, the two screw notches. It also comes with some special thermal pads. And what I have to do is I'll switch to something I found online from the manufacturer of this in order to uh, figure out how I should install it. So as you can see, it shows the upper half here and the lower half here. It shows a blue pad on the top, pink pad on the bottom, and they sandwich together like it shows on the right hand side in black and white. So let me prepare each, pad, each one of these first. Let me get the pad out. I'm gonna do the pink pad on the bottom first. Take this pink pad out of the little package. One side seems to have a protective cover on it on the white side. That's probably the sticky side. We really don't want this to be sticky. We don't want it to permanently attach itself to the M2. This is going to go inside at the bottom and then I'm going to carefully place it. Not that adhesive so it's pretty good. It comes right off. Which I was a little bit worried about because the M2 says if I remove that little label I can lose my warranty. Let me line it up at this end here and then drag it across and now that fits. So there's no stickiness here at all. And then the top piece needs to blue. And blue is the same thing. Looks like they give you another option too. Um, looks like it's not in the instructions but it looks like separate little strips. So maybe you can put strips on the individual chip on the M2 as an alternative. As I pull this back, this here is just a little bit tacky. So let me just go ahead and take off one side first. And again, I'll start at the bottom. Get it lined up, it's easier to do that. <coughs> And I won't pull off this little part here until I act. I'm ready to put it down inside the M2. I'm going to take the M2, and again, I'm going to start at the other end here. Same thing, just notch for the screw. And now i got to get these little screws into each of those little holes. Not too tight to start with. I'm pressing a little bit, not too much. Make sure they're all nice and secure. Not too tight, not over tight, and we don't want to strip any screw threads here. And I'll take this and see if I can get it in here. Make sure it went in. Yeah, it went in. Get it down in there. And now I gotta get that screw back in there. It's a little bit harder now. tight. Wow, it matches the memory. <laughs> so the heat sink from this matches the heat sinks on the memory. We'll reconvene with the case. Okay, that concludes step two. Hopefully that was as good as step one. Again, if you can subscribe to my channel, it'll make it a lot easier. Just click on the little head here.